Hi, Adrian here, that of the geeks, and you're on Nerd Rage, and I'm here in Intramuros to spend Halloween at Puesto Manila's One Night in Intramuros Trece ish tour. So we're gonna experience the sights, the sounds, and the otherworldly vibes of old Manila. So let's check it out. The stories that I'm going to be telling you right now have been filed, ano, have been filed in Presinto 13 under the Tessa case files. Now, admittedly, there are many cases because Intermuros is a hotbed for paranormal activity. I wish I was inventing this, but I am not. Sino ba sa inyo dito ang you're here for the jump scares? Because this is not that kind of tour. I am not going to stage a tour na pagdating natin sa location, biglang may tatalon. Walang ganyan. So basically, the Tessa One Night in Intermuros is a special tie-up with the Tessa franchise. I am going to I'm going to take a tour group of around approximately 50 people around some of the more haunted areas of Intermuros. Intermuros for its 448 year history has been a hotbed for paranormal activity and at the very least I'm going to bring you to some of the places where there are alleged sightings. Okay, so there are some spirits that basically ang nakikita na peasants are people going in and out of church. But there's also a second set of spirits people banging on the door leading to be let in before horribly getting shot and killed. Because San Agustin is the only standing structure left from you know, Intermuros after 1945 and as such has the only vestiges of that kind of presences here. The, uh, the presences are different. There are some... Uh, there, oh... <laughs> I, have, they, I have nothing to do with them. <laughs> Nandito po yung tumapawit na espirito. Naka-label po si Santa Monica. <laughs> um, I started doing tours because Carlos Eldan left for Madrid. I took over Carlos Eldan's um, store here, La Mona Loca. We've rebranded it as Puesto. But one of the conditions that Carlos gave me as I'm taking over was for me to give tours. I am nowhere near that man's <laughs> capability. Um, capabilities when it comes to giving tours but he really wanted he really wanted more people to be introducing into Muros to the rest of the world so here we are I guess my angle is that since I have other fandoms and other interests I'm trying to look for ways and means of connecting these fandoms and interests and bringing them to into Moors, whether it's tours or activities or whatnot a priest by the name of Vicente Sepulveda was murdered inside the convent who would murder a priest in a convent? Kung di ibang mga pahe. So what they did was when they found the body, they took the body, dropped the body over, you know, over to that room, and they did to rest there. Imagine, just imagine this. Huh? Okay, you're entering, you're minding your own business. So you go inside, you see a dead priest pointing at you. The pressure is there. So admittedly, okay. So according to them. They found the guilty party and they had them swiftly executed within church grounds also. So that's why there is a weird energy to this area. Um, one thing that we I want to be clear here is that this was not this was not a group of Nipa hats. They found a fledging trading post, very wealthy. We were actually Muslims. We were under the hajanate of Brunei. And what did the Spaniards do from 1571 to 1573? They burned down everything and destroyed an entire civilization. You want to look for ghosts. I wonder why we have not seen ghosts of pre-colonial Filipinos here. Because the murder hate one was incredible. And why here? Because this was ground zero for one of the skirmishes of the Spaniards and the pre-colonial Filipinos under Raja Suleiman. So I'd rather look for that. Yeah. This was where Tatineo de Manila used to stand. The church and mission house is where this structure was rebuilt. It's now a museum, but it used to be one of the most beautiful churches in Intermuros with the best woodwork. Oh, here's the story now. 2018, an event, an event called the Manila Biennale was staged in Intermuros. It's the first of its kind and hopefully not the last. So, a photographer, of which I know personally, but will not be named, <laughs> was all alone here at 4 in the afternoon 
taking photos. And the best way to take photos, can you just imagine how hel high helmets are like that? So the best way to take a picture of those helmets was to lie down and take a picture here. So as she was taking the photos, so violently that her camera scared dead. When she stood up to look at her, there was absolutely nobody inside the room with her. The story behind that was that San Ignacio Convent was one of the places where the Japanese hold up. Um, people heard that Filipinos here to be killed en masse. Standing on end right now, like nature. Hey, 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 hey. I was supposed to bring you to the edge of that state, in the corner of uh, the corner of Anda and the uh, no, the corner of Anda and General um, Burgos State, where the beer gardens used to be. Supposed to, I <laughs> I changed it nayon because. Okay, this was a story that I actually confirmed from the Intermuros administration and I actually have a document proving it. When they were cleaning, when they were cleaning up that area, because the Pahia, that used to be the area where the Pahian Gate is. But when they were unearthing that, they found 27 whole bodies in that area, plus 14 skulls. So they basically found 14 bodies buried in the beer garden. I am not telling the story to freak people out. This is documented fact. Um, documented fact confirmed by the Intermuros administration's um, archaeological experts. What does it tell you about what happened here? Because another, fall another fallacy, another fallacy that's been said around is that most of the damage to Manila was caused by the Japanese. Unfortunately, that is not true. The Japanese were more than responsible for the killings. And that's documented fact. But the Japanese did not have bombs. They did not have the air support. They did not drop bombs in Intermuros. The Americans did. The Americans dropped the bombs because they did not want any harm to you know, fall on their soldiers. Bombs don't discriminate who they hit. So whether they hit Japanese or Filipinos, they were collateral damage. And when, this, oh, when all was said and done, the Pearl of the Orient was a smoking crater. So the aduana traditionally was the customs house, and this relates back to our history with the Manila Acapulco Galleon trade, which honestly is a bigger deal than we thought, huh? because because of the Galleon trade, Manila along with Acapul Acapulco and Madrid were the first truly global cities in the world, because that was the first time that Europe, Asia, and the Americas were united by trade and commerce. One of the stories that was actually confirmed to me by somebody who has sight is that this is uh, this spot is actually a conduit for spirits. And weirdly enough, there's a lot of Chinese spirits that go over here. Which is kind of weird because the Chinese presences are actually on the other side of the river. It's no accident that Binondo is on the other side. Binondo and San Nicolas. The fact that there are Chinese spirits hovering dito, coming from the river, this one serves as a conduit for it. The creepier story that I've been hearing Vito, is that there are certain circumstances that people can swear that they hear children running around and laughing inside. So you would think that the nexus, the symbol, uh, the Episcopal See, the symbol of Spanish religious power in, you know, in the Philippines would have the most number of spirits in Intermuros. The Manila Cathedral is actually one of the most inert, most peaceful, most empty place that you can find in Intermuros. There is absolutely nothing here, which is weird in itself. <laughs> I could have not timed that perfectly. Think again. The church agrees. The church agrees. Most ghost sightings you see are residual energy, which is most of what is in Intermuros, residual energy. However, in the Palacio de Verde, 
This is actually second to Fort Santiago, one of the most <laughs> non-peaceful places here. This was built in 1975 and currently houses the former lake, which in itself is a survival for all <laughs> negative energies. <laughs> Among others, 80 priests were killed by the Japanese by firing squad. And some people can swear that they still hear the crack of rifles in this spot around a certain time. This fire from, you know, fire from fully explored. There are still nooks and crannies that are waiting to be discovered. Paranormal experiences will still happen here. So even in a structure that is brand new, like at all, technically 1980s, we will still experience this. And as long as we experience this, uh, um, tours such as this will continue to happen. Okay. So I know this is a little corny. But maybe a little later, if we can just say a little prayer for the souls that died, that would be nice. Okay, I know it's not very cool to say that, but sige na lang. From the, from the agnostic, sige na. And with that, that does this um, One Night in Intomoros to a close. Thank you very much. Thank you.